Hello and welcome to this edition of NASCAR Vintage Owners. Rod Osterlin. Rod Osterlin, a former NASCAR Cup Series team owner from 1977 through 1981, and then again in 1989 through 1991. Notable drivers that spent time behind the wheel of one of Osterlin's race cars were Neil Bonnet, Dave Marcus, Dale Earnhardt Sr., David Pearson, Hutt Strickland, and Jimmy Spencer. In 201 Cup Series starts as an owner, he scored 7 wins, 5 poles, 59 top 5s, and 91 top 10 finishes, along with the 1980 NASCAR Cup Series Championship. In 1977, independent Dave Marcus was offered a ride from a California businessman named Rod Osterlin. The first start uh, by, by a car owned by Osterlin was in June, in the June race at Michigan, where Roland Wolnicka actually made a start in the number 91, in the number 91 Chevrolet. They started 28th and finished 13th. Marcus, his first start was at Rockingham in the fall in the number 98 Chevrolet starting 18th and finishing 31st. They ran the final race of the season at Ontario in the number 2 Chevrolet this time, starting 11th and finishing 14th. Then in 1978, the Osterlin team expanded to two cars, as Neil Bonnet joined the team halfway through the season. A number 5 Armour All Chevrolet starting at Race 16 at Daytona. Their best start was third twice in the summer at Nashville, then in the fall at Richmond. Their best finish was third in the fall at Richmond. Overall, they scored zero poles, zero wins, three top fives, and five top tens. Then, also, there was Dave Marcus behind the wheel of a number two Shoney's Inn Chevrolet. Their best start was third three times in the spring at Bristol and Charlotte, then in the summer at Riverside. Their best finish was second in the spring in Atlanta. They had such a solid season that they spent the entire season in the top five in points, even leading the points for one week at week 10 in Talladega. Dale Earnhardt also made one start in a number 98 Chevrolet for Rod Osterlin in the season finale in Atlanta, starting 10th and finishing 4th. That following season, in 1979, Dale Earnhardt switched to the number 2 Chevrolet team and Rod Osterlund uh, with suitcase Dick Elder serving as crew chief. Earnhardt made 27 out of 31 starts in 1979, missing 4 races due to injury near the middle of the season. Their best start was the first 4 times in the summer at Riverside, then in the fall at Richmond, Dover, and North Wilkesboro. Their best finish was first in the spring at Bristol. Overall, they scored four poles, one win, 11 top fives, and 17 top tens, on their way to seventh in final points, as well as Earnhardt being named 1979 NASCAR Cup Series Rookie of the Year. David Pearson was the fill-in driver for Earnhardt while he was out injured. His best start was first in the fall at Michigan. Then his best finish was first in the fall at Darlington. Overall, they scored one pole, one win, three top fives, and four top tens in four starts. Then in 1980, the Oslin Racing number 2 Mike Curb Hodgson Chevrolet team brought Dale Earnhardt back to drive full-time in 1980. Jake Elder also returned as crew chief, but after race 18, the World 600 at Charlotte, Elder was replaced by Doug, Doug Reichert. Their best start was second in the fall at Ontario. Their best finish was first five times in the spring at Bristol and Atlanta, then in the summer at Nashville, and then again then in the fall at Martinsville and Charlotte. Overall, they scored zero poles, five wins, 19 top fives, and 24 top tens. On their way to to winning the 1980 NASCAR Cup Series Championship. Incredibly, 
This team had burst on the scene, as well as their driver, Dale Earnhardt, winning the Rookie of the Year one year, then the following year, winning the championship. It's incredible how much they were able to accomplish together. Sadly, all good things, it came, like all good things, it came to an end, at least for now. In 1981, the Rod Ostland team, the number two Wrangler Chevrolet, driven by defending Cup Series champion, Dale Earnhardt. At the conclusion of race 16 at Michigan, the Osterlin race team was bought out by Jim Stacy. In those first 16 races, they, start, they scored 6 top 5s and 10 top 10s, and they were sitting 4th in points at the time that they, the team was officially become Jim Stacy's. After only 4 more races, Earnhardt would leave the Jim Stacy team due to differences between the two. For the majority of the 1980s, Rod Osterman was not in the sport of NASCAR. But in 1989, he returned with a number 57 Heinz Pontiac. The team signed rookie Hutt Strickland to drive full-time. Unfortunately, they DQ'd the Daytona 500 and the spring race in Richmond in 1989. Their best start was 11th in the fall in Atlanta. Their best finish was 4th in the summer at Michigan. Overall, they scored one top five and four top tens on their way to finishing 26th in final points. The next season, in 1990, the Osmond Racing Team signed Jimmy Spencer to drive their number 57 Heinz Pontiac. Their best start was sixth twice in the spring at Daytona and Atlanta. Their best finish was eighth in the spring in Rockingham. Overall, they scored two top tens and finished the 1990 Cup Series season 24th in final points. At the end of the 1990 season, Spencer and Osterman parted ways. The following season in 1991, the team would take their would make their final NASCAR Cup Series start in that season's Daytona 500. They put Buddy Baker behind the wheel of a number 88 Pontiac, starting 16th and finishing 37th. At the conclusion of the Daytona 500, Osmond sold off his equipment and has not been back in the sport since. Thanks for watching this edition of NASCAR's Vintage, Vintage NASCAR Owners. Take care everyone.